Hi folks, are you okay today? It's good to be with you. Um, I just want to share with you the Matt Delonte plot that was exposed a few weeks ago in Manchester. Um, as you all know, um, Cliff Jumper filmed me uh, with Aaron Ra coming to see me. Aaron Ra is a famous uh, atheist in Texas and he came over to the uh, UK to attend a conference and he came over into Piccadilly Gardens uh, especially to see me. Now, I was preaching on the three C's, creation, um, conscience and Christ, uh, looking at um, Acts chapter 17. And Aaron Ra knew I was preaching on creation and the issue of evolution. And there were a few of his 80s friends there and he came swooping behind me uh, uh, to get a photo shoot to make him and his uh, more aggressive atheist uh, friends uh, a bit more user friendly um, because they've not conducted themselves in a in a in a nice way towards me on the internet so they try to uh, smooth over the cracks as it were and also they they kind of jumped me with this kind of nice sweet small talk, photo smile and photo shoot that they they wanted um, they didn't film uh, they, they they manipulated the video then I complained they put the full video up um, on top of that they um, I invited him for a meal they didn't film that because they didn't want me to look good uh, by inviting me for a meal uh, he didn't take me up on the offer uh, I was re ready to debate him and they didn't film it where he ran as fast as he could away from me uh, to not debate um, with his entourage um, but um, the thing is that Cliff Jumper as, as Armra was going he he said DPR Jones and Matt Delonte uh, will be waiting for you um, and Aaron Ra at, they'll be at the hotel um, so I said I'll be there um, I came home uh, I did my logical exercises that I always do my, going through the various laws of logic I uh, got all my academic papers out stacks and stacks and stacks of academic papers uh, started reading them, started researching uh, doing lots of train, intellectual training uh, getting ready to go down and debate him and then um, they didn't know that I had an insider, so, uh, a person who knew everything that was going on uh, at that debate, at, at that uh, hotel. And I was reliably informed that they were ready to jump me uh, in a room where they would have cameras and Matt Delonte, DPR Jones and Aaron R. Uh, along with a lot of other atheists were going to be in a room and they were going to get me in that room and they were going to try and corner me and no mock me and laugh me and really Nobody, try to the bomb, I'm just the in ID. that room but have it on lots of cameras and just completely emotionally destroy me and I was informed about this um, so I didn't go and the plot was foiled um, so I'd like Matt Delonte to make a public statement to say whether this is true or not. And um, I have absolute solid evidence uh, to show that uh, there was a plot going on. And I've already given the evidence. And um, the evidence is quite telling to know and show you that there was a plot going on. Because it wasn't any an accident that Aaron Ra came and then just went he was he was the bait they were giving me a bit of bait here's Aaron Ra come on come and get him come and get him so they 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 were doing something they they were preparing the ground and these atheists don't like to debate you one on one so he, he he comes he teases me he goes off and then he's hoping that I turn up at the hotel where they were going to jump me in a room film me and try to humiliate me and because I was forewarned about it, I didn't go uh, into the into the hotel.
or, or to the hotel. Uh, so I would ask Matt Delonte if he would uh, please uh, give a public statement whether this is true or not. I would ask DPR Jones if he would give a public statement. And I would ask Karen Rahn if he would give a public statement. And I request the opportunity to meet with them on a Google Hangout and to talk about this very serious matter that their plot was foiled and that they could provide evidence to suggest that they were not plotting against me and I have one piece of evidence to prove that there was something going on uh, and there was a plot going on so the ball's in your court um, so I think that Matt Delonte um, is one of the, probably one of the most, um, cute, should be cute atheist that I've seen on YouTube. Um, and I think that um, wherever there's a plot, there's always DPR Jones. Um, so, I think Aaron Ra probably wanted to debate me, probably really did probably want to, because I think he went along this plot um, rather reluctantly. Um, and I think it was to try and help Cliff Jumper. Um, out of the sorry mess that he and his hundreds of atheists fell into when they made that horrible accusation which they never provided any evidence for which nearly traumatized me and caused me to have nearly caused me to have another spray uh, so anyhow um the other thing as well um i've heard through the grapevine that uh, that Site and Atheist is working on a movie uh, concerning me. Apparently, it, it might be called The Quest for Iron Man. And um, the story or something goes that um, Cosimodo, uh, Richard Raspberry, uh, Dustin Seeger, Site and Brugengate, Arcane Logos and uh, quite a few other of the internet characters um, meet me in Manchester and want me to go and debate Aaron Ross. So we get a flight over to uh, New York because he's appearing there and we miss him and he's gone back to Texas. So we get the coach from New York and we, we get on a coach and we go and drive to Texas. But we go on this adventure and we meet uh, different characters. Um, Cliff Jump is following us on a bike around America. And um, Jim Garden is on holiday there with Alex Bottom uh, drinking uh, Newcastle Brown. Uh, on in Florida uh, in a pool um, with some bimbos uh, dancing around them and um, there's uh, um, there's uh, the Mexican mafia come running after us and stuff like that and uh, it's a crazy funny movie that supposedly they're working on uh, but I just want to say, if you are working on this movie, if it is true that some what I've been hearing, um, I just have to say this, is that my uncle said this. Uh, my, my uncle... Um, my uncle was probably one of the most intelligent men I've ever known. Uh, and he could have got a PhD in philosophy. And he said this. He said, Jason, he said, remember this. This is the profoundest philosophy you will ever hear. I said that, yes, Uncle Jimmy. And he said, Jason, potatoes are potatoes. 
Carrots are carrots. And Yorkshire Pud. <laughs> He's Yorkshire Pud. <laughs> That's what he said. He said carrots are carrots. Potatoes are potatoes. And Yorkshire Puds are Yorkshire Puds. And I, I never understood what he meant by that. But it's pretty profound. And um, what, it, what I'm saying is that it is what it is. You know, and at the end of the day, if you want to make a film about me, it is what it is. But if it is what it isn't, then you'll know about it from me. Okay. So, always remember, potatoes are potatoes, carrots are carrots, and Yorkshire pud is Yorkshire pud. All right. Anyhow, I just want to say that uh, I had um, some great debates the other day with the agnostic. Loved it. Um, loved it. About 500 people, I think, 200 at a time, and maybe 100 walking through maybe more than that i bet i bet it was a lot lot more but we had some great i had the gr two great debates with an agnostic and I, I just absolutely loved it i had a good discussion with a hitchens fan christopher hitchens fan he was a nice guy and um but uh, it was a private discussion not a, a debate publicly uh, like the agnostic um and i was able to show him the lack of scholarship with uh, the new atheist on the historical jesus studies which was quite uh, easy to do uh he used the dynam rising gods uh that there are these dynam rising gods you know, to quote him uh, ancient text and i was able to quote him uh, the way academic scholarship deals with these ancient texts and he wasn't able to answer them and i gave my final argument concerning logic which i used and it utterly demolished him and the agnostic who came uh, it was the it was the argument that i used on dpr jones debate and uh, it gets them every time utterly destroyed the guy yet the guy kept going on and on and on and didn't realize that he was defeated but you know it's not about debate at the end of the day it's about knowing jesus it's about knowing god it's about coming to know him you know and at the end of the day unless you become a spiritual man or a spiritual woman you'll never understand the truth flesh gives birth to flesh but spirit gives birth to spirit and unless you could become folk in the spirit unless you uh, are in the spirit you will um not understand the truth that's why jesus said we worship in spirit and in truth so these are the things that we need to think about the spiritual life the spiritual man and feed the spiritual man and no matter how many arguments i give at the end of the day you're never going to know the truth unless you actually come to know jesus through the holy spirit um i listened to a, a video today by Saiten Brugengate and again these questions about what is truth and you ask an atheist what is truth and they'll say whatever they say is there absolute truth and they'll say no you say absolutely sure there's no absolute truth and they'll say absolutely sure and they contradict to themselves and then the more clever atheists will turn around and say well it's just word games no it's not just word games it's called you've made a contradiction and you can't face up to it and uh, the more I go on, the more I realise the intellectual bankruptcy of uh, atheism. Um, one of the most proudest moments of my time in Manchester is, is the pride that I felt for the agnostic community in Manchester. Because at least that young man who was an agnostic publicly stood up and publicly debated me. And I was proud of him. I was proud of that agnostic. You know, and at the end of the debate, he came up to me and he, he shook my hand and he gave me a hug. Aaron Ra ran away. Aaron Ra could have done that. He could have debated me. And we could have shook hands and give each other a hug. But he didn't do it. But that agnostic did. Matt Delunty 
could have come into Manchester, debated and shook my hand, and we could have hugged each other. DPR Jones could have done it, but they didn't. But yet, the agnostic did. And I'm proud, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of the agnostic community in Manchester. Because, you know, that's what I've always believed in. I've always believed in it and passionate about it. That's why I've always had a problem with atheism on the online. It's not atheism itself. It's that anti-intellectualism that the atheists propound, that dogmatism, that aggressiveness, that closing down debate and discussion. That's what I've been always had a, a beef in my body about the atheist on, online. And that's why I admire the agnostic that came into Manchester and specifically asked me, can I debate him politely? And debated me politely. And he, gave, he, he, he landed some good punches, intellectual punches, and I gave as good as he gave. And people were informed. Uh, it was an in, informed debate. We had two informed debates. And uh, it was it was a delight, absolute delight. And that's all I've ever wanted. And and that's why you, when I uh, had discussions with John McDropper, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed them with him, and a few other atheists that every now and again that have come along and engaged with me, I've truly, truly enjoyed it. But s spreading rumours like some do, always mentally ill, spreading rumours, uh, doing nasty things online, uh, phoning people, phoning, phoning my house up, trying to spread nasty rumours about me, uh, vicious rumours on the internet, um, coming in to film me and trying to humiliate me, uh, things like that. They don't, they, they don't intimidate me in the end because in the end, you know, there are decent people around. There are decent atheists. I mean, in fact, and I keep repeating this, that the vast majority of atheists that I meet in real life are great people. Are really great people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some really nice atheists, and I mean that. Uh, and I've been on university campuses, and I've loved them. They've they've been highly informed, uh, and I've, I've had some great discussions and debates with them. But it's this internet community, the Aaron Ross, the DPR Jones, the Cliff Jumpers, the Jim Garners, the Alex Bottles, the Making Explicits. Uh, night flyer, it's these kind of people. Uh, live life 8072, uh, size 10 atheists. Um, it's all that crowd. Uh, they just get on my notes because they're highly anti intellectual and uh, no plum, whatever he is now, 88 or 99. Um, and all the vast crowd, uh, King Crocoduck, uh, and we could go on and on and on. Uh, Thunderfoot, uh, just the whole shamboogle of that internet atheism. It, it's just, it's just, they're just sad people who have got nothing better to do than to whine and moan and criticize. And they can't just, you know, I would love it if they put bow ties on. If the whole time for a week wore black bow ties and drank a glass of wine and invited on each of their channels a Christian and they would say no ad hominems formal academic debate and at the end of it just be friends with a Christian if that happened on the internet you would not hear from me at all concerning this people you, my job would have been done but, it, but it's a culture of the jungle rather than a culture of Oxford and Cambridge. But fortunately, the vast majority of atheists that I meet 
I don't like that in real life. Maybe it's something to do with the internet itself. Maybe it's the internet, the anonymity, often creating a culture, which is often the bullying culture where people are bullied, who speak out and have a voice. Maybe that's what it is. And it's not just about, it's not just atheism, but there are people who claim to be Christians uh, doing the same thing. and. In, in various other camps so maybe it's just that an anonymity in, on the internet that creates a culture of cyberbullying where if someone like me comes along who's who stands up for democracy stands up for free speech stands up for the right of the individual to have a voice the right of minorities uh, the right of of those who have the have have a, have their voice taken away people like me who champion that who champion democracy if you, think, if you don't think of champion democracy look at my uh, lecture on democracy free speech and and, and uh, street preaching which is 40 years ahead of its time i spent six months researching that paper so no one can doubt my defense of democracy um, and in fact um i was talking about John Stuart Mill there, and recently, recent discussions with the Liberal De Democrats and lectures that they've been doing recently uh, on TV, trying to reflect on their foundations, they've gone back to John Stuart Mill. Uh, so, you know, I'm ahead of my time because I, I gave that lecture some time ago before the Liberal Democrats have just recently started to go back to rethink their foundations and rethink uh, the, the issue of... Uh, the issue of uh, John Stuart Mill. So, so there we are. Um, it's all about love. It's all about respect. It's all about caring for one another. And at the end of the day, whether we're whatever, whatever position we are, we should just respect each other and be able to debate and discuss each other and, and allow people the freedom to discuss. Um, that's what I think anyway, um, for what it's worth. I, I'm very, very passionate about freedom of speech, that everybody should have a right to freedom. I'm very, very passionate about that. And I particularly, it, it, get, it used to get me angry, but I've learned to control my anger. I've learned to channel my anger in a more positive way. But it used to really, really infuriate me that people would try to take other people's freedom away. And it used to infuriate me to see gangs of atheists like Thunderfall and his henchmen who used to gang up on um, you know other Christian apologists and, and kind of like bullied them off YouTube um, and, and I used to get really angry about it I used to get angry about Dawkins the way he would do it uh, and Hitchens but I realise now that we don't have to do that at the end of the day we just have to do our thing we just have to just be gracious and kind and, and just preach the gospel and share the word of god and you know when aaron Ra came up to me in manchester i i invited him for dinner i invited him for dinner i said come and have a a, a, a traditional meal you know and um, i invited him for that you know to have a traditional meal so Anyhow, so I hope this video helps you to think and uh, be interesting to see Matt Dillon T takes the challenge. Um, the evidence that I have has already been put on the internet, is well known. So I think very carefully of the atheist community want to challenge me whether there was a plot or not because the evidence is already online, it's already there for people to see. So you need to be very, very wise and very smart because you will be out trumped because I have my ace card to prove without a shadow of a doubt that there was something going on at that hotel that they were uh, wanting me to, to draw me in there. Uh, so there we are. Okay, take care and God bless you. Uh, stay focused, focus on Jesus, focus on the gospel, and uh, have a good day. God bless.